So welcome to this video on trading with divergence. I'm Adam Koo. And before we start, please pause the video and read this disclaimer. And once you're done, let's carry on. Okay, cool. So what's divergence all about? So you have learned that you can determine a change in trend using moving averages, when the moving averages cross over. Remember that? So with divergence, we can anticipate a change in trend even before the moving averages confirm it. We anticipate the change in trend. So how do we know there's this anticipation, right? So we look for a conflict between the price trend and the indicator trend. Now you can use any indicator. We'll be using the MACD 12, 26, and 9. And whenever there's this conflict, it tells us that there's a high probability that it will move in our anticipated direction. So, there are altogether four kinds of divergence patterns. Okay, four kinds. Um, before I go into that, now, how do you know which one to look for? Okay, the first thing is, when you look at a chart, you have to ascertain, is it an uptrending chart, which is on the left, or is it a downtrending chart, which is on the right? That's the first thing to identify and that's pretty simple right because uptrend is higher highs and higher lows so the moment you see that you know that okay it's an uptrend now once you see it's an uptrend then you gotta ask are we right now at the top of the uptrend okay in this first case over here or are we at the dip of the uptrend which is the second case over here now if you are at the top of the uptrend what do you anticipate? You anticipate that the price will come down. Correct? That's right. Now, of course, it can come down and go even higher because the trend is still up. But we know that even on an uptrend, it's got to come down from the high before eventually going higher. Okay, so we're anticipating it's going to come down. So because we anticipate it's going to go down, we call this a bearish divergence because we are bearish, we anticipate it's going to go down and it's going to reverse down. So it's called a bearish divergence reversal. Got it? Okay, so I'll repeat again. Whenever you see that you are at the top of an uptrend, you look for a bearish divergence reversal and you're looking to short at the top. And of course, you have to uh, buy it back to exit at the bottom uh, before the trend continues. Okay, so this is a counter trend trade. You're shorting against the trend. Yeah, okay, now, but if you see that it's on an uptrend, in this case, an uptrend as well, but you're at the dip of the uptrend, in other words, you're at the bottom of the uptrend, what do you anticipate? You anticipate that the price is going to go up, right? So you are bullish. So you look for a bullish divergence. And because we are looking to continue the uptrend, it's called a bullish divergence continuation. All right? So in other words, whenever you see an uptrend, you either look for a bearish reversal or a bullish continuation. Next, if it's a downtrend, then we check is it at the bottom of the downtrend? Which is in this case, we're at the bottom of the downtrend. Or are we at the rally on the downtrend? In other words, we're at the top of the downtrend. Now, if we're at the bottom of the downtrend, what do you anticipate? You anticipate that it's going to reverse back up. Okay? So we are bullish. We are bullish. So we look for a bullish divergence. And again, it's a reversal pattern because we're looking at it from going down to going up. So it's a bearish reversal pattern. Now again, we look to buy here, go long. And of course, we, we need to exit here in case the downtrend continues. So again, this is a counter trend trade. We are going long against the downtrend. Now, if you see it's a downtrend and it happens to be at the top of a downtrend, at the rally over here, what do you anticipate? You anticipate it's going to go down, right? So we are bearish. So again, for this case, we look for a bearish divergence. And it's a continuation pattern. We're looking for the downtrend to continue. Okay? So these are the four scenarios. So how do we know that it's going to happen? Or how do we know it's high probability? 
we look for conflict. We look for conflict. Now, how? So let's take a look at the scenarios. Yeah. Now, before that, understand this. Whenever we look for bullish divergence, we must connect and compare swing lows. Now, don't ask me why it's just like that. Just memorize this, okay? Whenever we look for bearish divergence, we connect and compare swing highs. So over here, you see these are swing low points, right? Swing lows, okay? Swing lows. We, we always are going to uh, connect the swing lows, okay, and compare them to the indicator, swing lows. But for bearish divergence, we always connect swing highs. We connect the swing highs, okay? Connect the swing highs, da da da, and we compare them to the indicator. Now, if you're still a bit confused, don't worry, I'm going to it in a short while, yeah? All right, so just memorize this. Once you got this, let's go into detail for the four kinds of divergence patterns. So, again, the first one we're looking for is a bearish divergence reversal pattern. When do we look for this? We look for this when we're at the top of the uptrend, which is over here. So let's imagine that right now, when you look at the chart, you are here right now, at this point. Let me use my pen. You are here, okay? Now, all this on the right has not happened yet. Let's imagine it has not happened yet, okay? So now that you're up there, you're anticipating it's going to go down. It's going to go down. So you're looking for a bearish reversal, right? So for bearish, we always connect swing highs. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this swing high to this swing high. So we're going to draw a line to connect the two swing highs, connect it together, all right? Now imagine it's straight, okay? Now the important thing is that when you connect the swing highs, there cannot be any intersections. In other words, this line cannot intersect any candles in between. Okay? Now, once you connect the swing highs or the price, look at the indicator below. In other words, the MACD. And you've got to make sure that the MACD, the corresponding swing highs on the MACD, so when I say corresponding, it means to say they must be vertically aligned. Okay? Vertically aligned. If it's one or two candles off, it's fine, but more or less aligned. Okay? Then you connect the swing highs on the MACD. From here to here, connect the swing highs again. Connect again. Imagine it's straight line. And again, this line cannot intersect any lines in between. Okay? Now, if you see that the price is making higher highs, but the MACD is making lower highs, that's a conflict. That's a divergence pattern. So once you see that, you know that, okay, there's a high probability that this guy's going to go down. So what do you do over here? You do a sell. You short sell. Okay, now of course, if you already uh, bought the stock somewhere here, you're long, then you could always sell to take your profits. But if you're not in the, the trade at all, you could aim to short sell here. Okay, short sell here. And it goes down, you make money. Okay, and you have to buy it back to cover your short position. Okay, once it hits some kind of support here before it continues going up. Because again, you are selling on a downtrend, you're doing a counter trend trade. So you've got to sell and cover very quickly in this case. Now, just because you see this divergence doesn't mean you sell straight away. Okay, you have to wait for a confirmation that it is coming down. Okay, so how do you know it's a confirmation? Well, what happens is after you see this swing high, the next candle, which is this red candle, must make a lower high. If, if it makes a higher high, then this is no longer the swing high. For this to be the swing high, the next candle must make a lower high. Okay? So that's the first condition. Now, you've got to make sure that after the swing high, you get a bearish candle, which is red color, right? A bearish candle that makes a lower high and this bearish candle has to close below the low of this candle. Okay? Now remember, if you look at a bearish candle, it opens on top and it closes below. So in this case, does it close below the low of this candle? No, it doesn't. So it's not a confirmation yet. But the next 
bearish candle, it opens here and it closes below the low of this candle. So the moment you've got this candle, you are more confident that it's coming down. You can then do a sell. Okay, you can do a sell over here. Got it? You do a sell over here. Let me, let me draw it again, make it a bit clear for you, okay? So what you probably will do is you can put a sell order five cents below the low of this candle, all right? So it can be a sell a stop limit order. A sell stop limit order five cents below the low of this candle. So that means that the next day, if the price goes five cents below the low of this candle, it gets sold for you, okay? Now, then you put your stop loss maybe about three to five cents above the swing high. So your stop loss would be here, and that would be a buy stop order, all right? That's a stop loss, okay? Got it? It's buy stop order. All right, can't draw very fast with this. Okay, so you're selling here, your stop loss is there. What is this called? That's called your 1R, right? That's your risk you're taking, okay? So you've got to make sure that you can hit at least 1.5 or 2R of profit to make it worth your while, okay? So where is your target? Where do you exit the trade? Well, you look at where's the next level of support. Now, normally, the 50 moving average acts as a support. Okay, so if you're selling over here, then uh, your target would be the 50 moving average would be somewhere uh, somewhere here. Okay, so this would be your target price to exit the trade. So you could do a buy, a limit order to exit the trade over there. Okay, buy limit. So from here to here, okay, make sure it's at least 1.5 or 2R. So you're risking 1.5, or rather you're risking 1 to make 1.5. Make sense? And so it's very important that when you take bearish reversal trades, make sure that the price or where you short is far away from the moving average. Because if it's very near the moving average, the moment you short it, it goes down a bit, hits the moving average, support bounces up, continues the uptrend, and you are screwed, right? And you're losing money, all right? So that's something to take note of. Cool? Okay, cool. Great. Now, so let's take a closer look at, oh, yeah, I put it there. That's right. Sell stop limit there. That's your stop loss. So this is your entry. That's your stop loss. And that is your take profit level, right? With the three orders over there. Now, let's take a closer look at, again, the confirmation candle, which I talked about just now. Okay? So once again, a bearish divergence is valid when you have a bearish confirmation candle. Like I said early on, that closes below the low of the swing high candle. Right? So this is your swing high candle. This is the highest high where you have connected the line. So you've got to make sure that the next candle is a confirmation candle, which means it must be a bearish candle. Red. Red going down. Yeah. That closes, closes below the low of this candle, okay? And then you can do a sell after you get a confirmation candle. So once again, put a sell stop order. This is your entry price, five cents below the confirmation candle. Then you put a buy stop order, which is your stop loss, five cents above the swing high candle. Now your one hour distance, which is the distance from your entry price to your stop loss price, shouldn't be too wide, if it's too wide, it's not worth taking it. It should ideally be less than 280R or two average true range. And then we put a buy limit order. This is your target price at the next level of support, which could be your 50 moving average or wherever there's a support line. Yeah, And ensure that a 1.5 to 2R distance to the target price is ideal. Okay, So in this case, you can see that's a swing high candle. Now, is this a confirmation, this one? No. Why? Because although it's bearish, it doesn't close below the low of this candle. Now, this is a confirmation candle. Can you see that? Because this closes below the low of this candle. Cool? Great. But of course, be careful that, again, sometimes if the confirmation candle is too long, 
and by the time you sell here, your 1R, right, this is your 1R distance, is too big, it's not worth taking the trade because it may not go down enough to hit your 2R target. You know what I'm saying? Next thing, if the swing high candle, right, in this case, this is a swing high candle, happens to be a bearish reversal pattern, or rather a bearish reversal candle, like it is what we call a bearish pin bar or a shooting star. Okay, these are all fancy names. Basically, if you see that, the swing high candle has a small body and a very long upper shadow, you can short sell it immediately. That means you put a sell order 5 cents below the low of this candle. Sell stop limit order. And your stop loss again is 5 cents above, which is your uh, buy stop order. Okay, so that is only if you have got a a bearish pin bar, also known as a shooting star, with a small body and a long upper shadow that makes up two-thirds of the range of the candle. Then you can do it. So let's take a look at another example of the bearish uh, divergence reversal pattern. So this is one on cable, C-A-B-O. And again, imagine when you look at a stock, you are right now, as you look at it, you're at this point over here, okay? So again, you're at the top of an uptrend. What do you anticipate? You anticipate it's going to go down, right? So you're looking for a bearish reversal pattern. So bearish means what? You always connect swing highs. That's right, remember, bearish always connects swing highs. So we will connect <clears throat> swing high to swing high, right? So we connect this to this over there. <clears throat> and again, make sure that this line doesn't intersect any candles in between. Now, some people may ask, could I connect this swing high to this one? Of course you could. As long as it's two swing highs, you can connect it. No worries. So you could, you could connect this one to this one as well. Okay? Now, then you look down and look at the corresponding indicator swing high, which is here. It's corresponding, right? Vertically aligned. <clears throat> Excuse me. And over here, vertically aligned, over here, okay? And you connect this to this as well. Do you see a divergence? One going up, one going down. Price making higher highs, MACD making lower highs. Yes, you do. So that tells you that there's a high probability that price is going to go down. So the moment you see this, do you short it? Do you sell short? No, you have to wait for a confer mation candle right now in this case this swing high that you see over here happens to be a bearish pin bar which is what i mentioned just now long upper shadow is small body so the moment you see this you don't have to wait for a confirmation candle you can short immediately so again you put a sell order uh five cents below the low of this candle your stop loss 5 cents above, and your target price set it at the next level of support, which could be the 50 moving average. Ensure you got a 1 is to 2 risk to return ratio, at least 1 is to 1.5, and it's good to go. All right? Now, you can also go short if the MACD turns bearish, which means from the black histogram, it turns red, okay? whichever comes first. In other words, whether you get a confirmation candle or you get the MACD turning bearish, whichever comes first, you can take the shot. Okay? Great. Now, let's move on to the next one. So the next pattern is a bullish reversal pattern. Bullish reversal pattern. Now, when do we look for this pattern? Recall, we look for this when it's a downtrend and we're at the bottom of a downtrend. Okay, so in this case, imagine when you look at a stock, it's on a downtrend and you see it at this place over here, at the very bottom of the downtrend. So what do you anticipate at the bottom? You anticipate it's going to go up. Okay, so you're bullish. You're bullish and you're looking for a bullish reversal pattern going up. So for bullish, Always look for swing lows. Remember that? Yeah, for bullish, connect swing lows. So we're going to connect 
this swing low to this swing low. Again, you could ask me, Adam, could I connect from this swing low to this swing low? Yes, you could. If you want to do it, you could also connect it like that. No problem. Okay? But if you connect from here to here, the price is making lower lows, but the MACD is also making lower lows. So there's no divergence if you were to use these two points. All right? That's why we don't use those two points. Instead, we use this one, connect to this one, and this one, connect to this one. Why? Because there is a divergence. Price makes lower lows, and MACD makes higher lows. So there is a divergence. Can you see that? But if we connect it here to here, and we connect it here to here, there's no divergence. So we won't do that anyway, right? Now, would you connect this one to this one? Could you do that? No, you can't. Why? Because if you connect this one to this one, guess what happens? Mm, actually, you can't. You can't. Uh, because I thought it was going to intersect. If it's, it's going to intersect, then you can't. So in this case, you could do this. But if you connect the corresponding swing low here to here, again, there's no divergence. So you wouldn't use that. Make sense? So you've got to find the two swing lows where there's a divergence. And if none of them has it, then, then there's no divergence. Yeah? Okay, so in this case, we, we have got a divergence here. We're going to go long, we're going to buy, okay? So the moment you see this, get ready to buy. But you have to wait for a confirmation candle. Now, when you're buying, your confirmation candle has to be a bullish candle, okay? That closes above the high, right? That closes above the high of the swing low candle. Okay, so after this swing low candle, the next one, is it a confirmation candle? Is this a confirmation candle? No, because it is bearish. It's got to be bullish, okay? Now, next one, is it bullish? Yes. Does it close above the high of this candle? Yes. Does it make a lower, does it make a higher low? Yes. So this, my friends, is a confirmation candle, okay? So once you have this, you can buy. So you could put a buy order five cents above that confirmation candle, right? You can use a buy stop limit order. And when you put your stop loss, five cents below the swing low candle, that's your stop sell order. And again, the distance from the entry to the stop loss is one hour. Where would you put your target price or your sell limit order, right? You put it where there's a next resistance. So the next resistance could be the 50 moving average because you can see the 50 moving average acts as a resistance. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? Yep. So this could be the target here. Or you can use the previous high, which is here, as the target, depending on how conservative you are. If you're more conservative, you take the lower one as a target and make sure that you're risking one to make at least 1.5 or two. If it is not, then it's not worth it, okay? So normally, I only take bullish divergence patterns if the price falls far away enough from the 50 moving average. Because remember, I'm buying here. When it goes up here, I have to sell. Just in case it hits the moving averages and con continues the downtrend. Because remember, I'm buying on a downtrend. I'm doing a counter trend trade, so it's a bit more risky. I've got to get in and get out really fast. Okay? Great. So that's your bullish divergence pattern. Again, closer look at the confirmation candle I talked about. So once again, a bullish divergence trade is valid to buy. When you get a bullish confirmation candle, that closes above the high of the swing low candle. So once again, this is the swing low candle. Why? Because it's the lowest point. Okay? So I gotta wait for a confirmation candle in this case that opens here and closes above the high of this candle. Then I can buy. Put a buy stop order 
five cents above the confirmation candle, which is here. That's my entry. And put a sell stop order five cents below the swing low candle, which is over here. That's my stop loss. Okay, and again, this one hour distance, right, is uh, one hour, should be less than 280, uh, not too long, not too wide. And we put a sell limit order at the next level of resistance, the target price, and ensure that we get at least one is to 1.5 or one is to two, okay? How about this example? Now, in this case, you can see the swing low candle, the swing low candle is a bullish pin bar. Now, although it is red in color, it is still a bullish pin bar. The color doesn't matter. Why? Because it's got a small body and a long lower shadow. That's a bullish pin bar. Okay? Or we call it a hammer pattern. Yeah. So once you have got this uh, a very bullish reversal candlestick pattern, you can immediately put a buy order 5 cents above it, stop loss 5 cents above below it even without the confirmation candle. Right? But if you're a bit more uh, risk adverse, you want a further confirmation, then yeah, you could wait for a confirmation candle as well. Okay? So in this case, again, it's a swing low candle, and this is the confirmation, right? And then you buy after confirmation. Cool? Okay, cool, great. So let's look at another example. So this is another bullish divergence reversal pattern. So once again, imagine you look at the chart and it's a downtrend. And when you see it, you see it at the bottom of the downtrend, which is over here. So let's imagine that this has not happened yet. You're right now here. And you're looking at it at the bottom of a downtrend. So what do you anticipate? You anticipate that hay is going to reverse up. So you are bullish. So again, looking for a bullish a reversal pattern. So again, for bullish, you always connect and compare swing lows. That's right, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to connect this swing low to this swing low. Again, could you connect it to this swing low? Yes, you could. You could also connect these two together. Um, but why, would it, why wouldn't you connect these two together, right? Because if you connect these two together, then you have to connect this one to this one. And you can't connect these two. Why? Because it intersects the line. Right? Remember that the two lines cannot intersect any lines in between. So you can't do that. That's illegal. Right? That's, you can't do that. Now, could we connect this one, this swing low, to this swing low? Could we connect this one? No, you can't because it intersects the candle. So this is also not permitted. So you got to connect two swing lows that do not intersect any point. So that is a valid uh, connection. Yeah? And again, you have to look below, vertically aligned, ensure that the MACD swing lows are also connected together without intersecting anything in between. And then you see, is there a divergence? Okay? In this case, there is because price makes lower lows, as you can see, lower lows. And MACD makes higher lows, so you have a divergence. So probability is that it's going to go up. What do you do? Right? Now, like I mentioned earlier on, if the swing low candle happens to be a small body with a long lower shadow, which is, and the lower shadow is two thirds, the range of the candle, you can buy immediately. That means you could put a, put a buy order there, and you could put a stop loss there, okay? And your target price would be at the 50 moving average somewhere here. This would be your target price. So you're risking one R to make, well, hopefully at least about 1.5 R over here. Can you see that? Now, if you wanted to, you could also wait for a confirmation candle, okay? So uh, is this a confirmation candle? No, because it's not bullish. Is this a... A confirmation candle yes because it's bullish and it opens it opens and closes above the high of this candle so this would be the confirmation candle and you can put a buy order once you see that got it or you wait for the MACD to turn 
bullish. Whichever comes first. Yeah? Whichever comes first. So once you see that, you can put in your buy stop limit order, stop loss order, five cents below. Target price, you could put it somewhere here, which will be at that time at the 50 moving average. Okay? Or you could also put your target price at the previous swing high resistance level over here. Okay? So make sure it got at least one is two, uh, 1.5. Cool? That's how you do it. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can spot these potential divergence patterns on charts. So I'm taking a look at a typical stock in the Dow Jones, which is the Coca-Cola company. Um, and I'm looking at a five-year chart, so it's over five years. And within that five-year period, you can see a lot of divergence patterns. We're going to look for it. So first, we're going to put in our divergence studies. Let's see where we are. That's us divergence. And you will load the MACD, uh, 12, 26, and 9. Okay? So let's go back in history to <clears throat> five years ago. And let's take a look at if we can, whether we can spot any of these patterns. Right? So again, I'm looking for reversal patterns. Uh, bearish divergence reversal and bullish divergence reversal. So currently, you can see the trend is going up, right? Because higher highs, higher lows. So whenever it's at the top of an uptrend, I'm looking for a reversal, a bearish divergence. Okay, so let's see if we can spot one. Um, so I'm going to scroll to the right and let's see if we can spot one. Okay, so do you notice that uh, the price is making higher high. So this is a swing high over here and we connect this swing high to this swing high. Okay, so the swing high to swing high. So price makes higher highs is at the top of the uptrend right now and the corresponding MACD as you can see is making lower highs. So that is a bearish uh, divergence reversal, right? Price making higher highs, MACD making lower highs. So we could potentially do a short sell over there. So if you do a short, basically you're taking a counter trend trade. You're shorting against the uptrend because it's at the top of the uptrend showing a bearish divergence reversal. So it's a great way to anticipate a correction on an uptrend or a possible reversal. So right at the... Now, question is again, how would you know that's a swing high? You will only know that this is a swing high when the next candle makes a lower high. So it's going to make a lower high for this to be a swing high. So this is definitely a lower high, so that's your swing high, right? That's a pivot point. So usually I like to take a trade when I have a confirmation candle. So if I'm going short, the confirmation candle must be a bearish candle. So you can see it's a bearish candle over here. It's a red candle, okay? And um, uh, it should make a lower high and lower low. So if you're more strict, you may demand that it closes below the low of the swing high candle, but as long as it makes a lower high and lower low, that's a valid setup, okay? So I'm going to take this trade and see what happens. So I'll put a sell order somewhere at the low of this candle. So where I'm drawing this line, that's the potential sell order, sell stop order. My stop loss would be at the high of the candle, okay? So we're going to place a stop loss a few cents above the high of this candle and the sell stop entry right below the low of this candle. So again, this is my risk. This is my 1R risk. So where do I place my profit target? So I've got to place my profit target at least um, 1.5R below the entry price. So I do a short, if it goes down and hits my profit target, I will exit for profit. If it goes up to hit the stop loss, I will get stopped out on this trade. All right. So very roughly, um, I'm going to place a profit target roughly about 1.5R below that. So that's 1R, that's about 1.5R, just at the 50 moving average. Okay. So let's see what happens. So the next candle uh, goes down, so it triggers the sell order. And boom, 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 boom. Oops, going up. Let's see if we can hit the profit target or will it hit the stop loss? Okay, going down, boom. 
That's right, hits the profit target, we are out of this trade. So this has been a winning trade. So moving on, let's uh, see if we can find another pattern. So you can see now it's on a kind of like on a mini downtrend, making lower highs and lower lows. So price is making lower lows and MACD is also making lower lows. So there's no divergence, so there's no trade. I'm looking for a divergence pattern. Well, first let me delete this line. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the trend a bit clearer. I'm going to just zoom out slightly. Okay, see if you can see a trend. Um, again, you can see price making lower lows, might be making lower lows. So there's no divergence <clears throat> to trade. So I'm going to scroll to look for a divergence that appears, hopefully. Okay, I think I'm looking at a possible divergence right now. You can see the price making lower lows, MACD making higher lows, right? So this is a downtrend, I'm looking for it to reverse, but I need to wait for a confirmation candle, right? Okay, there we go, that's the confirmation candle over there, great. So, again, I'm gonna connect this swing low to this swing low, so price makes lower lows, and, <clears throat> excuse me, MACD makes higher lows. Can you see that? Can you see that divergence? Very clear divergence pattern. And again, how do you know that this is a swing low? Because the next candle makes a higher low, confirming this swing low pivot point. Okay? And this is a confirmation candle because when I'm going to go long for bullish trade, I wait for a bullish candle that makes a higher high and a higher low. Right? So you can see this makes a higher high and a higher low. So that is a valid uh, pattern. So I'm going to place a buy order right above the high of the bullish candle. Okay. And a stop loss below the low of that swing low candle. Again, I would prefer if the uh, confirmation candle close above the high of the swing low candle, but as long as it makes a higher high and a higher low, that's fine, okay? So again, if I take this trade, this is my risk, that's my 1R risk, okay? Again, I'm going to buy here, if it, it's a buy stop order, so the, the buy order will get triggered if it goes above this level, this is my stop loss, and my profit target could be somewhere around here, which is 1.5R above the uh, entry price, so my profit target will be somewhere there, Okay, so giving me a good risk to return ratio. <clears throat> so let's see what happens. Let's see if um, it's a winning trade. So the next candle that appears, right, what happens is that it doesn't go above the high of this candle yet. So my trade is not triggered yet. Um, so the next candle, it triggers the trade, right? Triggers the trade. So I'm in the trade. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, so it hits the profit target. You can see it's another winning trade. Okay, so let's take a look if uh, we can find another trade. So moving on, let's go on. And again, I'm looking for... So right now, again, we're on an uptrend. So on an uptrend, I'm looking for bearish divergence reversal. On a downtrend, I'm looking for bullish divergence reversal. So I'm looking to go against the trend. These are counter trend trades. We're anticipating a correction of the current trend or reversal in trend, all right? Okay, over here you can see price making higher highs, but the MACD is flat, so that's not a divergence. So let's carry on. Let's go on. Let's find something. Ah, there we go. Here's another potential uh, pattern. So again, we're on an uptrend right now, and we're right now at a high. So price makes higher highs, as you can see. 
That's a swing high, followed by a confirmation candle. <clears throat> so price makes higher highs, and MACD makes lower highs. So that's a bearish divergence reversal pattern. So once again, what do we do? We will sell here. We do a um, sell stop order. Our stop loss will be somewhere there. All right, and our profit target would be somewhere there. All right, take profit target. So again, after we sell, if it goes down, hits our profit target, we'll be having a winning trade. If it goes up, we have a losing trade. So let's see what happens. Again, let me uh, draw it, uh, put it in. Um, so again, that's my sell orders. My sell order will be just below the confirmation candle, which is the red candle. My stop loss would be above the high of the swing high candle. And again, my profit target would be at least 1.5 R. R means your risk, all right? So that's one R somewhere about there. Okay, so let's see what happens. Boom, okay, price goes down, hits my uh, entry, so I'm in the trade. Let's see if it hits the profit target. Boom, 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 boom. That's right, okay, great. So once again, it has hit the profit target, right, over there, and that's another winning trade. So let's move on and look for another one. Okay, so you can see price makes lower lows, MACD makes lower low. So again, there's no divergence, right? There's no divergence. Right? I need to spot a divergence. Okay, um, is this a divergence? Ah, I could spot one right here, okay? So, again, price makes lower lows, right? And MACD makes higher lows. There we go. So, divergence, right? So this is a swing low candle. Now, is this a confirmation candle over here? Is this a confirmation candle? No, because it is a red candle. We need a white candle to appear, a bullish candle. So let's go to the next candle. Boom. There we go. That's a bullish candle. So this bullish candle makes a higher high compared to the swing low candle and a higher low. So that is a valid confirmation candle. So we can now place our buy order. Um, place a buy order right above the high. Of the confirmation candle, we can place a stop loss right below the low of the swing low candle. Okay, so the buy entry is over there. It's a buy stop order that will trigger if the price goes above the high. That's my stop loss. That's my one R, which is the risk I'm taking. Okay, so my profit target is going to be somewhere here. That is my take profit. Okay. And that is uh, at least 1.5 R away. Don't be greedy. Don't always have to take one to two. You could, but you know, one to 1 1.5, you're still making money. Remember that. Okay. All right. So again, let's see where's my profit target. My profit target is somewhere there. Approximately that's one R. That's 1.5. Okay. Let's see what happens. Next candle, boom, goes up, triggers my buy order. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if it reaches the profit target. I don't know. Oh, oh, it's okay. almost, almost, yes, okay, hits the profit target, so another winning trade, right? Now, again, you don't win all the time, right? No matter how good the trading strategy is, you can't win all the time. In fact, in trading, uh, if, you know, for every uh, 100 trades that you take, and you always have to take a large sample size, okay? For every 100 trades you take, if you can, you know, win 60 trades, you know, 60% win rate, and have a 40% losing rate, that's enough to be very, very, very rich, right? Because again, every time you lose, what happens, right? You lose uh, one R. So R is your risk per trade, okay? And each time you win, you win uh, at least 1.5 or two R or more, depending on your strategy. So if you do the math, right, so 40, uh, losses that, that's minus 40 R okay and 60 winners if you take 60 times 1.5 <clears throat> that's 90 R so 90 R minus 40 R is equals to 50 R in profits so you make 50 R in profits over a hundred trades 
right? So that's a roughly, okay, so let me say, what is an R? Okay, so R is your risk of your capital. So if you're risking, example, 2% of your capital, for each trade, you risk 2% of your capital, then 50R is 100% return, okay? So 100% return uh, out of 100 trades, um, that's pretty decent, right? So if you take uh, 20 trades a month, uh, in five months, you get a 100% return on your capital, right? In a year, you get a 200% return on your capital, right? Even with just a 60% win rate. So remember, uh, a successful trading system is not just the technique, um, it's also the psychology and your money management, all right? Hi, so if you like the video, you can subscribe for more videos by clicking the subscribe button. If you want to find out more about our live training courses in Asia, go to wealthacademyglobal.com. For online professional stock and forex trading courses, you can go to piranaprofits.com. So this is Adam Koo and I'll see you soon.